everybody, and we're back with another bundle review. This time, we missed a couple of bundles. One was, I forget what it was, it was one I wasn't even interested at all in touching. Another one was, I couldn't get it out until like before the bundle ended, like right before the bundle ended, and I figured that's not even, was not even bothered with that one. But here we have the Total War bundle, a bundle consisting of products from Creative Assembly, behind the Total War, famous Total War franchise. You get Medieval 2 Total War Collection, and Shogun Total War, both uh, games in the Total War franchise. Shogun's the original Total War games, the first game Total War. Medieval 2 is like the fourth one, I believe. And it was a 2000, 2006, I want to say. But we'll talk a little bit about these. Probably not too much, because they're the they're famous. You know, they're, Total War is a pretty well-known franchise. It's a strategy game of... You have a campaign map, and you have your strategy, wage of war, and campaign map, and you go into battles and control the troops for the battles, and it's great fun, and a lot of people like it, even though Creative Assembly has had some recent like QA issues with their Total War series. It's still very well received, so we'll take a quick look at those. Also, their action adventure game Viking Battle for Asgard. You also get a soundtrack for one of my favorite Total War games, Rome Total War, the first Rome. Not that I don't like second Rome, but I remember. It was a good time. It came out a good time in my life. I was like a kid, played Rome, it was great. <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. You get a beta access key to the Total War Arena. It's their multiplayer Total War game focusing on the combat of Total War battles. You also get a Warhammer Illustrated campaign map. I mean, wherever. I mean, I got the bundle. I never haven't gotten this campaign map. I don't know they're mailing it to me. Or, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that one. But they say you get a Illustrated campaign map for Total War Warhammer. Side note, super hyped for that. Uh, I'm a big Warhammer fan, and I'm a big Total War fan. So you're throwing out Total War Warhammer at me. I'm super excited. And you get a, a $10 value of junk in their Total War free-to-play, like, mobile game, whatever. We'll, we'll mess around with that one later. And also access to some ebooks. Uh, this is not a book review. I've not read these books. So I think I might be take a little too long to do all the books to read, uh, review. But um, a novel, and then a couple of more historical books and studies. A study of struggles between Augustus and Tiberius, and a summary of the epic battle, Alessia 52 BC, Final Struggle for Gaul. So if you're into history, I mean, some good history books there, and then the, I'm not sure how a, like, a historical fiction in Total War, to, uh, I'm not sure how they justified that, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know the author, but it could be a great book, I don't know, it just seems kind of weird, it seems like a weird setting to, like, write a fictional book, because it's, like, historical fiction already, and you're, like, Having an historical fiction novel based on a historical fiction game, it's whatever, I'm sure it could be a great book, I don't know. But let's start with the Total Wars and move on from there. So here is Medieval Total War, uh, like all Total War games, you have a campaign map, you manage your towns, you can build structures, you can recruit soldiers, you can manage your agents and your armies. And I chose England, and you, you know, choose if you be France, Spain, Holy Roman Empire. Um, I forget who else you could choose from in, <laughs> in Total War. But also, it came about uh, this package comes with multiple expansions, allowing you to choose multiple different armies and army type, uh, multiple different countries to command. So, yep, this is just how you do it. Go in here, we're going to construct something. We just find something to commit, make a blacksmith to upgrade our armor. Uh, improve farms so we get more population growth, get more, get some more money here, but no, actually I actually have nothing here to give us more money. Anything down here, any, uh, financial things over here? The farming, I guess, does the farming produce more money? I believe it does in the later games, but that's one thing, if you're a Total War fan, you know, these games change a lot in between iterations, so you have to, your grain exchange that should, yeah, enables merchants to increase tradable goods. They get that, get some more money, money down here, and then you recruit soldiers everywhere you need to be recruited. And then typically the the campaigns seem a little short, the campaign options I had. Where's my objective? It should be in here somewhere. It's a, yeah, victory conditions. Hold 15 regions, destroy France and Scotland. That's it. I went after I do that in France and Scotland. Plus what I start with is, if I counted, either was 15 regions or close to 15 regions. So that's really all I need to do. We just build up an army, take over Scotland. So there's a couple factions for Scotland, then they're done. Uh, maybe take Ireland, get some more you know, resources out of that, and wage war against France. And then that is, that is... That sounds like way faster than any other Total War game I've played. But again, it's from 2006, right before the time when games really started to look good. So it's still kind of blocky and poly, poly, polygonal. 
think about 2008 when games started to actually pick up. Let's see if we can't get a fight somewhere. Uh, sh -sh -sh. This, uh, I don't think I can declare war against Scotland for whatever reason. I go declare war on France. We go fight France. I just attack France. I just attack France. Just, just show you the, uh, just show you the battle. We can make it a, hmm, let's do a ram and a, let's do a ram and a siege tower, man, it's not gonna, it's not gonna last, but I'm just trying to show you the, the like, battle screen, so it's fine, even though it's a terrible idea, just to go stab France in the back like this. Mission, join the crusade, oh yeah, there's also crusades, because it's the medieval period, there's, also you want, oh yeah, uh, Reinforce that region. Which is a super easy mission to do, by the way, so it's kind of silly you're going to have. But there's a Pope system. With the Pope, he calls a Crusade. He then can go on the Crusade, attack the Crusade target for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure what the bonuses are if the Pope just likes you more. This is actually not a game. Medieval 2 is not a game I played uh, before now. Yeah, under return reports, telling you how much money you have, how many forces you have. News about the world, and construction and recruitment. An alliance now between Turks and Venice, very interesting. Yeah, we're on a campaign for Jerusalem, so we can see Jerusalem down here. And that that's our target for the crusade, go attack that and the Pope will be really happy about us. Let's just show you the battle screen real quick. Assault. Assault them. It's actually like kind of a... Similar. Wow, he has 23 men. Why is the balance of power so extreme? Well, we have a really incompetent commander. Come on, Robert. And he's a pretty competent commander. But dang, 718 against 23. We're like. Commanding officer in this battle cannot lead nine attacks. Alright. Alright, Robert. <laughs> You're awfully incompetent, but there's 23 dudes. Can you take them with like 700 or whatever we have? And also, one thing I like about Total War is they have these little. Historical quotes from the appropriate time period. I always thought it was fun. Way better than pro tips to tell you about how to play the game over and over. You actually have them. You can wait to start to play it. It's pretty standard stuff. A lot, of, a lot of stuff in the Total War series kind of hammered out by this point. Yeah, shut up. Just, yeah, just start the battle. Go get that. Where's our ram? Go ram it. And everyone else just move forward. You guys go up there. Let's stand up here. You guys get up here, and we can, of course, increase the speed times... Only up to times six, though. And only when you're not moving the camera. That's one thing Total War is always... As far as I know, is always done. You can't, like, move the camera... While the, uh... Yeah, with the mouse, while the speed is high. It'll just slow the speed back down. Where are they? They just have, like, 23 dudes sitting in there. I can't see. Can't move the camera until I actually capture the place. That's more than 23 dudes. No, that's the flags for the... Okay, the flags for Town Square. I was really concerned. I thought those regiment flags for a moment. Can we can't get up here and capture it so I can actually start looking around. How are we gonna... Guys, how are we gonna... How are we gonna ram down a, an iron gate like that? Let's find out. Push that ram, peasants. I always like peasants in medieval strategy games, little dudes with pitchforks and t-shirts. And the animations, you know, aren't quite there if we slow it down today. No, no animations it. It's, it's an older game, you, you know. You know what's going on. There you go. Bastard game. Can we just like cavalry charge their 23 guys? Take them out. Uh as usual in Total War games, let's just go cavalry charge in there. We see what trouble we get in. As usual, in Total War games, you have the option to auto-resolve combats, which is kind of hit or miss, because sometimes you try to auto-resolve a combat that you should win. But... Flash... Fl flash units, that's it. Okay, I don't know what that means. It's kind of concerning. This is General's Bodyguards. Go go attack them. Whole army. Whole army. You know what? Everyone, go, go charge in there. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not doing this smart. There's 23 of them. We just run them over. But like in a lot of Total War games... The auto resolve isn't always like it doesn't seem to always work. You have a battle where you should clearly win. You don't want to fight it because it's gonna be boring. 
and then you so you skip it auto resolve, and then you end up everyone like dies, like you lose your whole army against half the numbers you have of inferior troops, and it's really confusing. But of course, fighting this battle, even though these battles are fun, one of the I think best parts of the game sometimes, best parts of the World War series. Fighting multiple, like, this is the big battles are fun. We have to fight a lot of small battles, kind of like a lot of small skirmishes. That just gets tedious. It just feels very time-consuming. So at this point in the game, in this point in the series, they actually have some animations. Not a ton, as you can see. A lot of these guys are just staring at each other. But, advanced. We'll take a look at Shogun, and you'll see. It'll be a nice comparison. That point. Alright, well, I think... I think you get the idea of how the game works. Oh, come on, so look at these guys run. Run, peasants, run! Run, peasants! Ha ha ha. Yes. Is a nice sweeping shot? It's very cinematic. It's always been a very cinematic series. I really like that. All oh, these guys run around. Is that nice? Oh, I murder their general. Well, that's enough of... Ooh, camera issues there. That's enough of uh, Medieval Total War. You get the idea. Actually, let's capture the town first and... Probably slaughter the because we're not saving this. We're just slaughter the the men. Also, archers, your range units will do friendly fire. So it's this is a terrible strategy having your archers fire at what all five of them while our whole army's like surrounding them. Do we get some arrows? Come on, arrows! You guys want to shoot? Ah, oh, here they come. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there you go. I think some guy got hit back there. That wasn't a very accurate shot at all, guys. <laughs> archers, you're doing terrible, terrible work, archers. How many of them could there possibly be left? One guy. It's one guy. He's right here. There he's dead. We got the down. Good job, guys. How are you still in the tower? This is one thing. Definitely about these old, uh, Total War games. They have so much trouble with the, the sieges sometimes, like getting on the walls, getting off the walls, the towers. So much trouble, like moving on to the wall from the tower, moving into the tower, getting off the walls. They have so much trouble with that. Then we've conquered the province. We've conquered the province. Come on, get in there. We can then, like, slaughter all the Frenchmen. Which is a terrible idea normally, but slaughter all the Frenchmen. He's lost, uh, he's lost his chivalry for doing that. But it has also in got more dread. Uh, common for characters in Total War series, they have traits. He's got a little bit more command. Is no, not at all chivalry, and it's gained a little bit of dread, which is either chivalry or dread. Uh, it's been occupies a slot as well as far as I can see. And then there we have the province. We'll just continue on doing that, fighting battles. The AI attacks us. You get, you get the idea. You know what's going on. We'll take a quick look at Shogun now. Now here is Shogun Total War. It is uh, from 2000, so you can see it's a very different uh, style and appearance because it's a very old game. They haven't quite figured out graphics yet. Oh, this is a gold edition, so as far as I know, it's, it was slightly updated. As I have like a real, like a real view, it's a evidently a map on a table kind of view, and then these are little, these are just little little representations of units, little models. And actually, kind of moves. They move very, like you just drag them and move them. It's not like the other, it's not like the other Total War games where your army has movement points and then they you know move a certain distance and they can block rows and such, no, you just, it's kind of a very risk style if your units just stand in certain provinces, which is very, changes the way the game works, so I'm just moving your armies around and everything quite a lot, because you're just dragging province to province, like, very, like I said, very risk style movement around. Also, be kind of annoying, because you can't, like, strategically defend a town or block a, block a certain area, like, block a straight and fight where you want to fight. It's just, you're just in the faction, or in the area. I also have to like drag your, let's see if we can get some armies out here. You have to like, your armies automatically join each other in the same province. You have to like spend a separate move to have them join together, which is weird. But it's a very old game. They weren't getting all the system worked out yet. And there is a lot of part, a lot of the risk style here that I like is that it's very quickly to move your units. It's very quick to move units around. You move one, one area to the next area to the next area and just takes a few turns to get pretty far and actually get, in, get some action going. Like I was playing this for like only half an hour, already conquered. Like this, this part of the country. You only started with a few, a few provinces down here. We already destroyed one of my enemies. We already move across here. Also, most of the provinces don't start with castles, and if the castles aren't defended, it's you just walk in. If there's no units there, you just walk in and take it. There's no you don't have to siege a town as a natural garrison. You don't have to, you don't have to walk around doing any sieges. You just walk it. You just you just walk in and take it. And if the castle like this has a castle, there's nobody. These units over here, we just walk in and take it regardless. 
there doesn't seem to be any natural garrison. So this seems like a very, it's much more fast paced, which I do like for a lot of reasons, for a lot of ways. And otherwise you construct and trains, like over here you construct tech trees and different, you can build ninjas and shinobi, build a tea house, get some shinobi over here in Hyuga. You already have one. Oh, sword dojo. Get some nodachi. We had a, we needed an event. Like it produces, it requires a legendary swordsman event. So I'd have some soldiers fight enough to get enough experience to become legendary swordsmen in order to trigger this event for me to build the structure for me to produce some more units. Which is kind of a weird way of doing it, but you know, it's a tech tree. And then we can just recruit, train some more units, get some, some cavalry, some horse archers. So the, despite being kind of primitive, I do like a lot of the old school, it's kind of, map overview, simplified overview of the campaign map. There's a lot of parts of it I, I like, even though some issues. The battle, though, man, they made so much progress in the battles. Let's just see if we can enter. Like, the battle ends, you move into the province of the other unit, then you end your turn, and then the the combat occurs, which is weird. Let's go into the battlefield, and you go, man, they, they have significantly improved from the first game. I never played the first game. I jumped in, I think Rome Total War was my first uh, title. But I go, okay, I get to look at the map, and we hit continue. It's light rain. Should we wait or attack? We can wait. Rain showers. Let's wait. Heavy rain. All right. Well, it just got worse. Let's, uh, can I, how long can I wait? Very heavy rain. Light rain. Enemies upon us. <laughs> okay, we can't keep attacking. We can't wait forever. So it's like select a formation. I'm not sure what that means, because we select our units. Like it says, because we're attacking, attacker cannot mobilize during deployment, so we can't really do anything during deployment, which is super weird. Like all other, uh, all other Total War games, you can totally maneuver your troops in deployment. Here, you just have to hope they didn't give you a stupid deployment, you just have to deal with it. So is this my general? Yes, yeah, right here. This is, our, this is our general, and it's ugly. I'm not gonna lie, man. 2000 was a was a dark time for graphics. This is hideous. We begin the battle. And the controls are terrible. It's like they didn't figure out there's any more buttons than just a left click. Like, everything is done. Left click. Oh, don't move. Where are you going? No, get, no, guys. Guys, stop. Go there. I keep right clicking. That's not how you move. You guys get, like, right there for me. The camera's obnoxious. It is. Like I said, there's some. Glad they upgraded this stuff because this, this is obnoxious to control. Do I even move in formation? Let's find out. I tell you all to go there. One thing I do like is that the speed is a slider. They can go super fast or like regular speed. Why weren't you selected? Oh, these guys weren't selected. Get up here with everyone else. This is so hard to it playing modern Total War games and go to this. I can see at 2000, I'm sure this was amazing, but man, it is <laughs> it is headache inducing now. It's so hard to control. Where's the enemy? I don't even know where they are. We can't even see them until we get close enough. I do like to slide it. We slide it up and slide it down. That is, that is nice. So trying to just control the speed a little more precisely. Just slide it up. We don't go fast or slow it down. Just slide it back down. Apparently under range attack. Uh, the archers. You go shoot them. You go counter shoot those guys. You guys under attack. You know, let's just... Let's just I, I, I get so frustrated waiting because this place is okay. Let's just go in here and attack these archers. They seem mostly archers. Let's get in there. You get on those guys. You get on those guys. You march up the middle and see who needs help soon. And there we go. <laughs> you see the dead bodies. There's like these pixel little piles of org like bleeding dead guys. You're supposed to be attacking them. Don't. <sighs> the controls are so be so difficult to deal with. All right, you. They they apparently need some help. Go over there. All right, let's speed it up. See what's happening. Oh, that's a terrible sound, isn't it? All right, they're just like retreating. They are running away. This is rebels, so they're poorly poor discipline. Yeah, 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 okay. We have them all on the run. Go, go chase them down. These guys are just the others running away. If they're all retreating, why don't we win? Am I missing something? Missing a squad or something? I forgot about the archers. Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay, archers. Archers, run. Run run for your life. Oh, yeah, they're just running away now. They're wavering. Okay, guys, there's some stuff. There's some stuff I wasn't paying attention to. You need to get in here. You can't click and drag, and that is just terrible. Like, man, they really... 
<laughs> really messed up not being able to click, click and drag, huh? Everyone march back. Oh, I was not, I was not prepared for some flanking maneuver. Not paying close enough attention. We're just doing the video. Okay. Oh, our archers are boned. Alright, speed it up. Are they running, are they really running away in cowardly archers? You guys need to go, like, get those guys. You're intercepting those guys. The archers are running away. Alright, now we get to play... Wait to go chase them down, because... There we go. This should be the last unit right here. <laughs> See the fighting, the animations are just kind of sit around each other until they all die. Is who's 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 possibly left? Let's wait till someone shows up. Like I can't, I don't know where they are. There we go. And we won. All enemies destroyed or routed. That's the gives you an ugly post game screen. We've taken the province. Like that's all we gotta do. Just win the battle. If the enemies aren't, there aren't any enemies in there, it's our province now. We get to control it, build stuff, uh, get the money for it. And I, got, I do like the simplicity. Like, it's a very simple game because it's old. And that it has a lot of strength for the campaign map. And just makes it feel so much snappier and quicker to play. Like, I don't feel like I'm setting down for like a like a 20 year game. I have to play for like four months straight and get bored and to quit. Like, yeah, if you do like some very large campaigns and later Total War games, they just feel like they take forever. This one feels like it'd be much snappier and quicker, but the battles are... Well, I'm glad they improved those. They're kind of ugly and hard to control. Part of it's just getting used to it, just like getting used to uh, the controls setup they used to have before they improved it, and just readjusting to uh, kind of kind of the old ways. Also, this is, I assume this is like... I think they have some like boat travel, but you just kind of travel to wherever, and then they'll teleport there next turn, or so. it's It's not entirely clear. There's also some uh, obscurity in the controls if you don't already know. If you haven't played this game before, be kind of hard to figure it all out, but here it is. Throne room. Oh, what have I done? What did I just do? Uh, okay. Oh, this is scary. Please, those who use an army, let me leave. Do not raise troops. Let me leave. Oh, what have I done? Oh, oh the map, the map, the map. Okay, Whew. that scared me. <laughs> okay, so apparently, don't press that button. That's looking up from your map, but you don't need to do that. That's not something you need to do. You can just stay on the screen, and it's fine. But there is this look at Shogun Total War. Uh, the first of the series, and it shows. They have some... There are some things they change. A lot of the old style. Some of it, some of it you know, still works out. Still feels good. It feels very, feels very different, but still feels good. Trick on the campaign map. Battles are... At the, at the core, it's still like the same idea. You have your armies, you control them, where they go, where they move, flanking, and all that. But... Yeah, you know, the engine's not all there yet for the 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 impacts and the fighting and the animations. It's just kind of a it's kind of a bunch of pixels waving at each other till they die, and it's the controls are obnoxious. So I'm glad to see they've come a long way. But this is a it, this game kind of has like a historical feel to it. it. Has a this is a significant game. It's the first in Total War series, a very popular series has has had effects on strategy games, and here it is, the first one. Here's what they started with. So it's nice to. You look at it from that, and the Creative Assembly is a big studio now, so it's already they started at, and it's nice to see it from that point of view as well. So it's at least a nice little uh, kind of legacy game. Next up is Viking Battle for Asgard. It's a very different experience from their games. So this is creative, one of Creative Assembly's action adventure games, released in 2008. It's a it's a hack and slash light RPG, and what we do is that we are a Viking guy with a name who is completely is not important because the story is super weak the cutscene you just start off like you're in battle he died freya comes to you and's like oh yeah uh the world's being taken over by the forces of hell they have special powers go kill guys like all right cool so then you jump into the game and here, here, here here's the map and it's pretty simple you got a free vikings you have a so objectives your main objective is to you know raid raid a fort we have to raise an army to besiege holden fort Obtain a bomb. So that's our main thing. We just do the small objectives to get that. So raise an army. You gotta go talk to a leader of mercenaries, do a job for them. We get mercenaries, go liberate the distillery. We free them, and we can then have those Vikings help us out. So there's a little cage of Vikings in it up here. We can go jump up over here. And time for some combat. Who's this guy? Oh, he has a shield. Oh, that's super annoying, the shield guys. That's the wrong button. That's the wrong button. That button I'm going for. 
Yeah, the shield guys are super annoying. You have a, you don't have a, to be honest, not, wow, you don't have much in the way of defending yourself. You, oh, the shield guys are so annoying. <laughs> you don't have much in the way of uh, combat moves. You have like a heavy, slow attack that you don't really use all that often. Because it's, it is very slow. And it's also doubles as the execution button. So here, dismember this guy and chop his head off. It's a very violent game. And otherwise, use your quick attacks and beat him up. Pretty, very, yeah, it's a hack and slash. You just run in there, mash the buttons, and murder all the, the hell spawn. I believe they're called. Go in here, we mash the B button, and it frees the Vikings. As long as they don't get hit and interrupted. And the Vikings actually will help you and go attack guys. So they should go kill this archer right here. Go get him, boys. Go get him. You can get him. Uh, you can also defend yourself. Left trigger, defend yourself. You have a variety of special moves you can learn as the game progresses. You pick up money. Yeah, you see, they're killing dudes pretty, pretty handily. You have a variety of special powers and abilities to get as the game advances. And then, ow, what the? It's really? They're all attacking you, and you're gonna be attacking me. There we go. Break his shield and just cut his head off. As we get to having a shield. All right, you guys all done? Are you liberated? Now sometimes, sometimes there's Vikings to join your army, and other times you have to do a job for them. So it says, no, oh, it doesn't say anything. Yeah, I have to, I have to do a quest for this guy, huh? So we liberated them. I talked to this guy. We do not wish to. We don't wish to be ungrateful, but we need you to do something. So they can do a fetch quest. You need to go. Oh, it's a cave camp. We're not even at the distillery. I was completely. We just walked, ran over here instead of down here. That a cave camp. Like you, you can just find it. You just find uh, more war Vikings. The map's very small. You see, we spawned here. I walked like, it felt like two feet. We're at a different area. He wants us to bring him Legion Insignia. Where is that? Take the Legion Insignia. So we go into the cave, and we get that. We bring that back to this guy. He joins our army. Done. Then we go to the distillery, and it's pretty much the same thing. We fight, we free the Vikings. Kill the Hellspawn, they send us on a mission, we go kill more Hellspawn to get something, and that is... This is the second island. This is the same thing we did on the first island, it's basically this gameplay loop. Of just you free Vikings and do these objectives to prepare for a big attack. And once you have raised a big enough army, you join the big assault to drive the Hellspawn off the island. And be the, the greatest Viking ever. There's some light RPG elements, because we'll just murder this guy. You can get some upgrades at the arena, upgrade like new combos, very light upgrade stuff, kind of stuff. They can get like, I can get a, didn't start, with, I have a jump attack. I didn't start with that, I had to buy that. And you can also get runes if you get some power, which is the button, like the controls, you can like, there we go. Get some elemental powers. It takes a long time, it takes that red resource to use it. And it sounds like the sound effect is broken, there we go. It takes that red resource to actually power that. Where the heck am I? I did not go into the cave. I'm the wrong way again. Dragonstone. Let's talk about that in a second. Uh, there's no fast travel, like, by the way, outside of... You can find lace, like, waste zones, and unless you travel between waypoints, but you can only travel to a waypoint from a waypoint. If you're far away from a waypoint, you just gotta walk. And that's awful. It's probably the biggest complaint about this game. It's a lot of just... Even the maps aren't very big, you just have to walk around. And I don't want to just walk around when I'm killing thing. I can just fast travel. It'll be so nice. But no, we have to do a lot of walking around. Here's the cave entrance I need to find. But you can also upgrade runes for those elemental attacks. But you take that red resource, which you generate so slowly. I've used the element, did the whole island, summon my elemental powers like twice because <laughs> it takes a lot of a lot of effort to build that up. And also some slight stealth. I really like the the stealth here. And it's not really a stealth game. That when you're close to enemies, you automatically like hunch down, which is cool. Just that just like signals your close to enemies, and then if you attack, you can attack. Wow, I missed. I how am I not hitting them because of the slope? <laughs> Look, I was hitting them because of the slope. And you attack enemies from behind, so one hit kill. And it's a very you know, it's not a stealth game, but you can do some stealthy actions, and it's I just like you hunker down there's enemies nearby, tells you there's enemies nearby that you can execute if they don't see you. That's a nice little nice little change change, especially if there's a large group of enemies or a particularly dangerous enemy you want to take out before you before you run to the group. Like these guys. Well, let's see if I can take them both out. Let's see if I can do some. Oh, I have the stealth execute. I forgot I have that maneuver. So another one of the uh, another thing I bought. 
very light platforming this game. You do some jumping around, it's all automatic for the most part, like I can. Let's get this money, use the money to buy those upgrades we're talking about. I probably can't jump across here. Speaking of jumping, you take so much fall damage in this game, it's kind of off, uh, uh alright, um, you okay there? Oh, he wasn't okay. You take a lot of fall damage in this game. If you, there's, there's a limit between you fall, you don't take any damage, and like you fall and you're, you're, you're dead, you're gone. That's it. <laughs> you made your mistake for today. But they also have, similar to the way the sneaking works, Finally, just have to spam that one maneuver. It's a skill I learned from the arena guy that I paid gold for. Just spam that to kill the shield, guys. There is a... Uh, let's see, like, down here, if we just... Okay, it didn't work that time. <laughs> we went back to the lace that work. Can I, like, a little work here? There it is. Yeah, he does a little, like, oh, can't fall down there, I'll get hurt. I'm going to do that anytime you approach a dangerous edge, just like that. But you see if I just jump down here? You wouldn't think I could hurt me. Nope, it kills me. It kills me. I, I know it's a far distance if you're doing that in real life. We're in video game rules. You think I could get around quickly like that? And they use that to generate a lot of artificial walls to make you take for it. Like, look, there's like a camp like right there. Like, that's where the Vikings are. There's some stuff up there. But in order to get there, if I wanted to get up there, I have to go all the way around a ledge. If I wanted to get down from there, I probably couldn't jump because I would take a ton of damage or die. Which is kind of annoying. That happens. I have to walk all the way back to that cave. Let's go to check out the distillery. You don't have to do them in order. You have some free. Oh, enemy nearby. See, I like that little crouching. Like, oh, there's enemies nearby when I go over there. I think that's a nice little system. The combat, yeah, super simple. You have light attacks, heavy attacks. You're mostly using light attacks. That is a lot of bad guys. All right, let's go fight them. Is that something I'm supposed to? Oh, let's go run in here. Oh my, this is like. Look at all these <laughs> bad guys. Oh my god, we're super. This building. There's, all right, yeah, this is not a, this is not somebody supposed to fight. You can take a decent number of guys on at one time. Wow, okay, we're not very, you're not very fast, uh, you're not very fast, Viking. <laughs> okay, get over the fence. Just get over the fence. Thank you. Yeah, you're not very fast, which can be kind of annoying. I guess I was, oh, they're just leaving. There's just a huge patrol of bad guys, and they just left? All right. I mean, whatever. Oh, I don't feel these. Spam the stab. Spam the stab. Oh, we're out of we're out of stab juice. Out of I don't know, stamina. It's kind of unclear exactly what's uh, that resource is. No, oh, stab him again. If it doesn't, if we don't actually hit him. We'll break his shield. There you go. Reminds me a little bit of that is a pretty simple combat. Just block and. Some units require special attacks, mostly you just spam your regular attacks and block when you see attacks incoming. Reminds me, what was the game? Hunted? Like a co-op hack and slash game? That wasn't really, I mean, honestly it wasn't that good. It was okay. It had some good ideas, but overall the combat felt pretty weak. And also, some old Lord of the Rings games, those kind of hack and slash games. That's what it personally reminds me of. Oh, wow, they didn't kill my sneak attack, special ability didn't kill, kill the shield guys one hit. There you go, got him. Oh, you're not gonna kill me, guy. And the execution seems kind of silly, because I can execute that guy, but if I don't, he just falls over dead. So I'm like, what's even the point of executions? They just fall over. Alright, let's liberate. Oh, come on. <laughs> Alright, now let's see if I can open this without anyone. Nope, nope, nope. That guy's gonna stop me. Open the door, open the door. Oh, man, they're super fast. And then they, there's that guy gonna come, and then that guy's gonna come, and then that guy's gonna come. That is a lot of hell spawn I have to deal with before I can just open this door to release the ban the Vikings. But you get the idea. This is how the game works. And after that, so after we do the special objectives and raise our Viking army, we can initiate a uh, like a raid event. We can initiate a big battle to conquer the castle. Oh my goodness! I just want to free the Vikings. All right, we can initiate a. A raid, a big battle, after doing all the quests in the area. We have a big battle going for, you know, a, a fortress or the control of the island or whatever. All these Vikings, it'll be like a big battle like this. Yeah, you know, all our Vikings go run up and fight all the Hellspawn. And we'll be involved in that, although it's not as... It doesn't feel as cool as it sounds because it's really hard. Like, let's, let's get in this melee right here so if I can show you. 
So I have a big melee here. There's a bunch of Vikings and Hellspawn. And they're all jumping around. And, yeah, and when there's a lot more Hellspawn... Right now it's not such a big deal because there's so few enemies compared to our Vikings. But when there's a lot of enemies, it's so hard to see. You have no indicator of when you're being attacked. You just have to visually see it. We get a cutscene. What's going on here? Is this the... Uh, oh, this is the, the big patrol coming back? They have to... Alright, let's fight this big patrol. Here, this will be a good place to show you what I mean. Because it's so hard to... Are we hiding? Oh gosh, we're hiding. Oh, oh, this is cool. Oh, I'm setting up my ambush. Good thing they told me about this. I didn't just ruin it. Oh, oh god, don't no, 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 no. But you'll see what I mean. It's really hard to defend yourself. You don't get an indicator that you're being attacked, so you just have to visually see the attacks incoming. When there's like a hundred Vikings and Hellspawn all around you, it's almost impossible to actually see. So you're just guessing when to block and attacking, and it's kind of it doesn't feel good to be in a big fight. You kind of just have to avoid those, go for the small skirmishes, and I get in here. I use my. I'll say I have throwing axes. Let's uh, toss one of those at somebody. There you go. It's a one hit kill. That's a little bit of money though. You see what I mean? Like, there's so many guys. Camera doesn't always cooperate. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that guy was attacking me. I didn't see that until too late. Oh, that guy's coming in from behind. <laughs> it's so hard to see what's going on in one of these big battles. Let's try to get a element. Let's do some fire. Go set some dudes. You killed them all already. Your fellow Vikings are really strong. They <laughs> kill these guys, no problem. There we go. We've liberated the area. Nope. No, we have to talk to this distiller Nyal in order to get his troops. So where is he? Is it going to be this guy? That's going to be this guy. If we're right. Nope, nope, he's over here. Well, don't tell me he's way up there. I have to go up there and talk to him. Oh, is that? Not at all annoying. But then that's... So what his quest is. My father never believed in the he, power I don't of care. The voice acting is not particularly strong. Yeah, the flame pot recipe. And then these are the waypoints I'm talking about. I have to go get the flame pot. Oh, they're in these ruins that were up here. You see, those are the place I was talking about. That was the place I was talking about, right next to the like base. But we can't just walk up there. We have to go all the way around. So they use a lot of high walls to like arbitrarily inflate the size of the world. It's a pretty small world, actually. And then that's what you do. You get into a big battle at the end to reclaim the island or outpost or just open up is like the drawbridge, the fortress. So I imagine after this fort, we then have stuff to go on here. We can't upgrade until we get to this battle arena, which is the next part of this level anyway. And then I imagine I'll have a second huge battle for that city over there. It looks like a city and a port right up there. I can only move between these uh, markers. And also there's a dragon. Mentioned earlier something about up here about a dragon. Where is it? Yeah, dragon stones. You may summon Kelda the dragon. Uh, when you have those big fights, those big battles, you also have dragons that you summon. But it really just works like an artillery strike. You press the dragon summon button and use dragon summoning points. The rune like charges, or so, I forget what exactly how to describe it. We have a couple of charges that you get either from completing objectives or from killing big dudes. Dragon runes, I think. Dragon runes, what they called. And then you use that to summon the dragon and just have it take out a priority target. So you can choose, like, take out a shaman or a take out a group of archers or something like that, and you decide to use the dragon. It's, I mean, it would be cool if the dragon just walked down and started killing dudes, but he just operates. So he flies over and shoots fireballs at times, and hey, there, hey, there's a dragon. And what do you know? Speak of the devil. Are you going to come help me kill these guys? Oh, no, those are also Vikings. Where am I? Going back to town, it's the wrong way. And that's how the battles work. This game is... I'm on a, a gamepad. I had a gamepad for a while. It's the first game I actually plugged into my PC for because the keyboard. You can use the keyboard and mouse, and it actually wasn't that bad at first. Like, it didn't feel like that bad. It doesn't feel like there were just awkward number of buttons or anything I needed to particularly have like a gamepad for, except the camera. Because the mouse controls the camera and also your attacks. So your hands on the mouse and you move the camera around because it's like a console. The camera's try constantly trying to get behind you. Or maybe not so much on the gamepad, but we move the keyboard. Let's see, like this. Yeah, like this. Like, you know, the camera's trying to keep up, get behind you when you make turns like this. But when you're on the mouse and keyboard, the. Um, your mouse is, you know, you're moving your hands. So the camera's constantly shaking, trying to, in response to your hand, but then it stamps back because it's trying to get behind you. And it's, it may be motion sick, and then that's why I, like, immediately switched to a controller, because it's just unplayable with a mouse keyboard because the camera was so terrible. Pretty bloody as he'd chop off dudes' heads and dismember them and everything, but as the... This is Viking Battle Asgard. You're a Viking, 
you do a lot of fetch quests that are primarily fetch quests. Most of them have been fetch quests. You do a lot of hack and slash fetch quests. You get a big hack and slash battle to go to the next area. You do more hack and slash fetch quests and hack and slash battles. And you get small upgrades, mostly combos. Like, you can upgrade the runes to get the stronger elements. Attacks, which you don't use very often, and you can buy potions and throwing axes, and otherwise that you just buy new combos, and then that's that's the game. <laughs> Viking Battle of Asgard. It's it, it's alright. I don't find it particularly compelling. It's a, if you like hack and slash, like there's lots to do. It's lots of hack and slashing. You run around and you hack and slash lots of stuff. So if you like hack and slash or Viking mythology, this doesn't seem to be a ton of Norse mythology. Like you're a Viking working for Freya against the Legions of Hell. And there's dragons, which, okay, I mean, dragons, there's dragons in North, North, Norse mythology, but it doesn't seem to have a strong Norse component, but if you really like Vikings, you think Vikings are cool, and you want to go hack and slash a lot of Vikings with a lot of other Vikings, and surprisingly big battles, the battles do get pretty big, even if it's not always, their size isn't always a strength, then, yeah, you can pick this up and play it a little bit, the story's super weak, and I don't find it super compelling, but... If you like hack and slash, I can you can get quite a bit of fun out of this. I don't even like not even a huge fan of hack and slash and the story is super weak, but I've still played this for a couple hours and have quite a bit of fun with it, so check it out. And here we have a title I'm very interested in, is Total War Arena. It's currently this is the closed alpha build, so of course alpha tons of things can change, but you get the general idea what they're going on. It's a it's a multiplayer, online multiplayer Arena comp I have arena I guess arena combat game, but I don't say arena because it's kinda like MOBA, it's just MOBA and it's not at all MOBA. But it's a total war combat, but it's online. You have this you get a a small army and your commander, and then you team up with several other commanders of their small armies to make one big army to go against another big army composed of other people's commanders. You get a choice of several commanders, you can you know buy new commanders. The commanders themselves have special abilities that you can level up as they get experience, your commander and your individual Units get experience as they fight. You have different famous uh, soldiers, so Julius Caesar, Scipio Africanus. You have they each have their own special, unique abilities. There are four abilities that you level up individually, which I guess is kind of reminiscent of a MOBA, isn't it? There's a uh, currently there's only two factions. There's the Greeks and Romans. Then the Greek, Greek Alexander the Greek. Yes, Alexander the Great, Leonidas, Miltiades. Even though I mean, is that Macedonian? Leonidas is Greek, but even though Macedon. You, I mean, we don't need to get into details, but it's just, you know, generally uh, Greek units. And then these factions also have their own tech trees. There's also a barbarian faction that's not quite in. These are placeholders, but that they said in the next update there will be barbarians then added into the the mix. And each commander also starts with their own, uh, also have their own armies. Or their, start with their own armies. And you can buy them for the free resources, you know, general silver and gold, gold's premium resources. One thing interesting I want to point out real quick is that you get a daily commander victory per winning with a commander, and that includes the premium resource right now, plus 100 gold, which I find really interesting, and I, it seems like something you wouldn't keep. You very rarely see premium resource given, like, this is a daily thing. Like, normally premium resources, if they are given out, it's at the very beginning, kind of get you hooked, and then it's like, you want more, you gotta pay for it. But getting a little bit every day seems, that seems very, I don't know, shaking the boat, rocking the boat a little bit. Uh, I guess we have to. I'm going to address the elf in the room real quick about the pay to win. It's closed alpha, so no idea if it's going to stay this way for pay to win. But it seems like for most things, like if we go to our soldier, we can't upgrade for premium currency. Like we can't force upgrades with premium currency. We can go to our commanders. We can't level up our commander with premium currency. It seems like the only thing I can really see using premium currency for is purchasing premium units with gold who aren't necessarily stronger. They don't seem like they're necessarily stronger than other. Units, some of them. So there's like a unit card here we can see, like compare these missile infantry to the Leve's missile infantry. So it seems like the Rayton. Okay, we click on the Raytons, go to Leve's, so it gives us the mark. So the Leve's are a little bit, they are worse than the Ration. So the Ration auxiliary are better. But there are some units, I forget exactly where. Also, you get some of the units, some of the uh, premium units are better, some of them are actually worse. The big thing I see is like right here, you have premium, you have access to cavalry premium before, like, before regular. Like, you don't have any cavalry at tier 4. 
Unless it's premium, then you have premium cavalry. Otherwise, not have access to cavalry. That's the only thing that's really concerning me. Because some of the uh, premium units don't seem to be that much better than regular units or aren't better at all. I forget exactly which unit in particular was that was not strictly better than his counterparts. And this is a big tech tree. Look at the army. This is a tech tree. You have to use a unit and level it up in order to access the next thing in a tech tree. So I had militia swordsmen. And I was able to level them up to Italian swordsmen and upgrade them to these Italian swordsmen down here. Did not level up the skirmishers. Seems like there's two paths right now between ranged and melee. And then you can make your army however you want with those units. We can just, per as long as we have the resources to purchase the units or and to upgrade them, support them, then we can uh, have them go around. They also have personal upgrades. So these archers, I cannot afford to upgrade their unit. I was able to upgrade their javelins. They're not archers, they're uh, skirmishers. I was able to buy them hats, give them a little more armor and morale, and give them javelins. And they are free. They're tier 1 units, so they're free. And the swordsmen we just got to take them to battle. It requires unit experience. Your units and your commander get separate experience. These are separate things. Commander experience. Use that to level up your commander to get higher tier units. You can't have a units higher level than your commander. And also level up his abilities. And units use experience to level up their stats. There's a lot of progression like there's a lot going on in progression which seems pretty it reminds me a lot of like war game like world tanks kind of stuff how you progress you get experience and resources then you invest those to um progress your character and then otherwise we just those who are going and Rome play a fight join a fight because it's closed alpha it's like super early in development there's a really small player base so it could take it might take forever to join him to find a match okay we finally found a game it took like five to six minutes queue time which it's kind of a long, long time, but not as long as I would have expected. I, there, I mean, it's on the Humble Bundle, so a good handful of people have this, uh, have access to this closed alpha so far. Seems like, well, we're mostly Greek troops against mostly Roman troops. Make sure Roman and Greek troops. There's, I mean, there's only two, there's the only two factions in the game. Am I the only, no, I'm not the only Germanicus. We have two Germanic Kai. They have three Germanic Kai. Leonidas. Some Caesars and was a uh, Spart, not Spartacus. I forget who the third Greek guy was. And we have Leonidas, it's Alexander the Great, and there's some Alexander the Greats. Or is that the? Yeah, that's Greece. Yeah, yeah. Who he was? Not that it really matters because I don't remember what all the troops, what all the commanders' uh, specialties and everything are for. So we should. I was hoping like the load time apparently got stuck in eighty nine percent. Come on, <laughs> there you go. Because I wanted to. Show you the deployment. Cause deployment's kind of interesting in how you deploy. It's not. It's not like complicated, but it is not something I've seen particularly a lot in multiplayer games. These kind of multiplayer arena combat games. Okay, finally, if we can choose where we deploy, like we call a place to deploy. So I can be like, I want to deploy in zone in a four, and then that's my spot. That's what I'm deploying. Or I can deploy in zone eleven. Oh, where do I want to go? I, think I already have four. But everyone else already taken other spots. I don't want to deploy in the river, that thing is crazy. Yeah, we'll just stick on floor. Whatever, we'll stick on this flank. We'll take floor. Floor, take four. And then we click play to confirm lock in our deployment zone. And then we are... The objective is to either just kill all the enemies or capture the base. Capture the flag. Well, not really capture the flag, so it's just taking the flag back to your base. Just capture the base, kind of, again, like I said, it's kind of reminiscent of wargaming games, like uh, World Tanks and everything. Now you get, like, different tiers of commanders, so... Uh, what am I? I'm a tier 3 commander with some tier 2s and tier 1s. I have two tier 2 melees and a tier 1 missile. Or a skirmisher, I should say. And two tier 2 swordsmen versus these spearmen. Three tier 3... No idea what those are. But he has three of them. And they're tier 3. So here's the actual combat. And here we, here we go. Finally, the camera controls are wazzed and not... Whatever nonsense like uh, arrow arrow controls that are commonly pretty common to Total War games, which is really awkward for your fingers. Here and seems uh, quick comment about the oh apparently we're on a road, so we get extra speed. Cool. I, didn't, I don't know why this counts as a road up here. I must have been back here. Why is my team? Whoa, 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 where are you backing off? Whoa, 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 team, where are you going? What's this guy doing? <laughs> I have to stick with my teammates, or we all we all die. Uh, my team. Uh, I'm already like on the hill though. Guys, let's abandon this flank. I can't, we can't be alone. I like, have it's, it's, played this game a lot. I played enough to know being alone is a good way to get yourself super dead. Let's go down and take this 
hang out this area, but then we leave this area. Like, I wish this guy didn't run over there. <laughs> He's just a little, I'm just abandoned. I have to take care of his left flank all by my lonesome. I don't think my character has the strength for that. Now I have a couple abilities from my commander. Heavy infantry charge being our big one. Extra speed and charge bonus. It only lasts a few seconds, so we really need to activate it like right before we land the charge. Like we only have a few seconds of it actually being active. And I do want to mention, okay, so line of sight's obviously a thing. You can see what everyone can see and can't see, which is one thing I really like. They can do that in future Total Wars. Show where the units actually can't see. Show line of sights. But also, uh... You have no different move speed. Like, you always move the same speed. There's no... I can't see any difference between running and walking. There's no... You're always running. Everyone's always running. I don't think fatigue is even a thing. Oh, hello! Oh, we found friends! Hello! Oh, ho, ho. oh we couldn't see around that blind corner. And now we just got ourselves in a big fight here. That we didn't want to be involved in. Are they going around us? Oh, okay, they're just in here. Uh, this might not end so well. Oh, what, swordsman versus spearman? Swordsman, we should have a small advantage here. Yeah, he's, he's under retreat now. Fuck, God, it's so blind. We can't see him. Get up here, guys. Keep our swordsman together. Charge! No, that's the wrong thing. Ah, uh, I used the wrong... I used the wrong button. I was supposed to use T. I hit R. Oh, I'm so bad. Because parry. Here, get the extra defense to counter front mistake. That helps out a little bit. Go. Get these archers, javelins. Oh, are we getting shot from above? No, wait. Are we? Can we? Can't see it? That'd be actually really cool. Yeah, we are getting shot from above. We can't see it. See, just because... Oh, I don't wish our teammate didn't run over to the left. And now it's me and this one guy who shouldn't have been... Who should have stayed over here in the first place. We're getting torn up. Uh, if we hold out long enough, the rest of our team might... Oh, yeah, we're getting flanked through Superbone. Uh, if you guys just bail out, we might be able to... Our swordsmen are, are pretty much done. Uh, maybe Javelin get out of here. The, uh... I should have stayed up on the bridge, and then maybe had a ability to... Oh my gosh, the archers are all so mad at us! Oh, they, they just uh, focused down my poor... My poor guys. And now my well, melee for trees, are they routing? Back into the fray, did you guys recover? You guys did recover. No, you're not recovered. It's you guys are recovering. Oh, just go, go in there. Go, go in there. <laughs> go harass the archers. There. We'll, we'll at least annoy them. We have enough, uh, a little bit of power to annoy these archers, because archers are obviously very weak in melee. So at least we'll give them some, uh, something to think about. Oh, no, you're, oh, we're in the, oh, uh, we're dead. Are you guys, you guys are recovering. So if we get our, our we get our skirmishers back here, we can still defend. What? And our guys aren't pushing fast. Like, you need to get up there to capture the thing. That's all we could do is hold them off. Because we got uh, the guy, the guy on my right. He spawned. Like he was supposed to take the, this position. I was supposed to be up here. He just ran to the center, but then I got confused and turned around, and it was all a big mess. And I went to try to cover him, but I left the other area open. It was, a, this is a mess. <laughs> it did not work. That was just a terrible plan. I don't know what's going on over here. Our team is not moving, so they're just going to capture capture the base pretty quickly. So I'm not, I don't think it's going to work out very well because this guy's just not like I don't know what these guys have been doing the whole time. I don't see a lot of dead bodies, so I don't. Have they just not been fighting. Seems like they just haven't been fighting. All right, well, it seems like this might be a defeat. Maybe if I just run down the middle, we just go sneak, you know, try to capture the base so sneakily. I don't know what. What are you guys doing? What are you guys looking for? Are you like hoping they'll come down and fight you? Cause they're just gonna go to the base, guys. Like, what, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? All right, all right. You're, you're fine. You saw them in the woods. You, you're looking for the ambush. All right, you're scared of the ambush. You got it. Here, throw some, throw some spears. We, we can help. We can still help somehow. Contribute a little bit. It's like, if, like I said, if you're playing a war gaming game, your, your, your tank or warship, whatever, is low on health. And you're just hiding and trying to, you know, get some damage in for experience, basically, what we're doing here. It's our poor skirmish. They have this cool little, uh, display of the unit health. I don't know the formation is left. It's pretty cool. Are you guys, like, throwing? Like, what are you guys doing? I think they're confused, because it's Ridge here. It's Alpha, remember. It's still, yeah, it's an Alpha product, so... They seem to be very confused. Here, go, go get those guys. Might be a little easier for you to actually handle. Now, they might not capture the base. If they really want to, they might, like, come flank us to kill us. Like, so they don't have to capture the base to win, of course. You could just, uh... You know, no, don't run up there. Uh, you do get penalties for friendly fire. 
so yes, it's a friendly fire, so you can do friendly fire and get penalized, penalized for it. I don't hit these guys in the back anyway. Oh, no, 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 hit these. Where are you guys going? Where are y'all going? Are you going to go attack the siege engine? Oh, that means we're here to get, like, wrecked. Oh my gosh, we are here to get wrecked. Well, if we run away, we're just going to get destroyed, like, while running away. So might as well see here, do what damage we can. Uh, we got, oh my, oh, we got, we got wrecked. Do we, do we stick to the battle now? Uh, no, we can sit around and, and uh, spectate for a moment. See if this grand strategy works. Doesn't seem like it, because now, yeah, this guy decided, they decided not to capture it and they will flank us. You can deploy whatever units you want, three range, three melee. When you get cavalry and siege engines, you can deploy those as well. I think, are these premium? Because those are tier two. I'm not sure when the Greeks, I remember the Greek uh, tier, uh, tech tree when they get supposed to get siege engines but yeah you can deploy whatever kind of troops you want they all seem you know you know like spears beat cavalry cavalry getting his range trains good against the uh, infantry without shields that kind of thing and yeah, we won we captured the base all that wasn't paying attention that big battle someone went down here after i was complaining about them not capturing the base they went down and captured the base so i take back what i said i guess they're they're a little impatient that was and that's why they they won us the game but here we go, we got a bonus, diversity bonus, like I said, there's a diversity bonus, so if you, you are encouraged to run more than one unit type, because you get that bonus experience for, for doing that, so it reduces, it discourages spam, but you can still do like two of one type and one of a different type, and you still get a diversity bonus. Which seems kind of weird, because the commander system, you can like specialize in a, like, you can take like a cavalry commander and specialize in cavalry, but you're slightly discouraged from deploying all cavalry, or at least all of the same cavalry because of the diversity bonus mechanic. But again, pre alpha so they could change that or if, whatever, however they want to. Uh, did I do some damage at least? Oh, this, <laughs> the battle results is so confusing. I can't, you can't change the organization. I don't know S and C, I don't even know what that means. Um, at P? Sco is that like score? I got, I got, I actually did surprisingly okay for the outcome of that fight. Friendly fire, I can do FF friendly fire damage. I did alright damage. I actually did like, what, fourth most damage in that fight? And I thought I did terrible, so good job, team. I got my upgraded swordsman to thank for that. And then, uh, now yeah, here's the swordsman to tell you. Although, it doesn't tell you the number, like damage, it just tells you the rewards they got for doing the damage, but it doesn't actually give you like a number of the damage. So it's very confusing. Close it down, then we can see if we have enough for upgrades. They did get enough experience for upgrades. We can upgrade their helmet for extra armor, their chest plate for extra armor and melee defense. That's probably be way better. Or a uh, Z Fos for extra melee damage and melee attack. Extra armor, melee damage, melee attack. You can afford both anyway. Oh, oh commander XP. Yeah, and this is what I meant. You have a commander XP separate from unit experience, and you can use commander experience to make a for unit experience. Commander experience kind of works like a free experience kind of system. But you also use it just to upgrade your commander. So yes, you use your own experience to upgrade your armor, upgrade it. That's a shield. Extra shield, armor, missile block, shield defense. I'd rather have a little bit more damage up in here. There you go, upgrade your sword. No, don't close that. Equip your sword, it's only 375. And you sack these? No, I don't. 75, that's the commander experience trying to get me to use. You already upgraded? Oh, duh. The Italian Spearman. These are two separate... These are two units? But the Italian swordsmen I upgrade and change as one single unit. So I tell them to use the weaker swords, both units will use the weaker swords, even though they're like different units. Which kinda confused me at first. But uh oh we have to replenish. Oh to replenish all do that. it should do it automatically at the end of the end of the unit. Add a consumable. This is actually new for me seeing this. Ah, there's consumables. So add melee damage, add melee attack, add armor. So this is probably a bit of the pay to win, but I just got a hundred gold for that win, and these only cost five gold per each, per each per uh, use. So it still seems I don't know the it's closed alpha, so you know all this could change. But so far, it seems like the monetization seems rather fair. Increased damage adds to armor. Yeah, probably be good to run these uh, consumables, especially if you do the restock on that. It's like a hundred silver. Add yeah, restock automatically, seems like it'd be really good. Like, what kind of consumables could you get? Greatly increased normal damage, reduced AP damage, increased armor piercing, reduced normal, increased damage, reduced range. Would be interesting. Fire, increased damage, increased range, reduced damage. So, just a lot of modifications. That's pretty cool. I didn't even notice that last time. Probably because it's in these buttons that are kind of like awkwardly down here, but that's where the abilities are supposed to be, I presume. 
Uh, Germanicus, did you get enough to upgrade? No, it's 160, 140 at least to upgrade his ability to get a Testudo. Which I don't really... I took Germanicus, I used, I'm using Germanicus because he was like the default. He's a heavy assault he fights in with their troops. Uh, vengeance seemed kind of cool. The infantry charge is alright if you actually get to use it. <laughs> Press the right button instead of messing up your soldiers. Melee defense right when they get into melee because you're dumb. Press the wrong button. But... I was also thinking, like, Julius Caesar has some cool abilities, increased speed and charge damage. Why do you have experience, Julius Caesar? Does... if I select you... I ah, Caesar. also your commander experience does not specific to commanders. That's that's something I did not realize as well. So I could... interesting, very interesting. Yeah, so it does work like a free experience system. I use it to upgrade the commanders. So I could switch to Julius Caesar. Although his army, the army doesn't go with him, does it? If I remove you. Yeah, okay. So that's very interesting. So the commanders have their own armies, but the experience they earn can be split. That is actually kind of weird, to be honest. It seems kind of strange to me, but that's just, that's just the way it looks. Can I can I queue up without a full army? Will it let me do that? Okay, it doesn't let you queue up without a full army, so you can't be able to troll and deploy without army. But this is Total War Arena. Very, like I said, it's a very interesting game. I'm very curious. It's closed alpha. I'm really interested. So you have the progression system of you pick a famous commander and you have historical troops that you customize and upgrade as you fight battles. But the battles themselves I have some reservations on because like you saw, you know, like all multiplayer games, your teammates aren't on board. It's a mess, but you only have three units to control. Maybe you don't all have special abilities. It's like, and you just... You move them all, they always run, there's no difference between walking, running, or stamina or anything, and you just kind of, just kind of mash yourself into the enemy, and you have some abilities to use, you can use some targeting, like what your archers to target, who do you run into, but yeah, like I saw, some, I turn that blind corner, suddenly we're in melee combat, and like, that's, that's the fight, that's what I'm doing, I can't, I can't contribute after that, just either fight or run away, running away, you're going to stab them back and you know, pretty beat up. So there's only, it seems, I have some reservations about the actual combat. It seems like your, it seems like what your actual interactivity, your agency as a player, isn't all that much. You only have three units, and if they get into melee combat, that's it. You just sit there, you cheer them on. Sometimes you get to use a special ability. So hopefully, may, I'm not sure how they would change that, considering that is how the Total War combat works. Maybe they give you more, more units, maybe more smaller units, maybe more abilities. I'm not sure what they could do about it. But I do have some reservations about the combat, at least so far. That is Total War Arena. To keep an eye on it, very early build, of course, closed alpha. We'll, we'll see as it develops. And finally, Total War Battles Kingdom. I have admittedly not spent much time with this title because it is a 100% idle game. It is see our blacksmith Bruce Reese when we click on it. We got some... We got some... Uh, Facebook idle games going on, what farm, the farming, famous farming game, it's like farm sim, farm, farmers, farm, the farm game, you know what I'm talking about. Just imagine I made a joke based off of that. This is, yeah, you build a town, nothing to do with Total War, like, I don't know why it's a Total War title, it has like, you build houses for workers, to build, to, like churches give you orders, barracks, blacksmiths give you troops. You can get, make get workers to man these places. Barracks give you troops and blacksmiths give you uh, money. Silver resource. You have farms to harvest to get food resource. Quarries to get the stone to get your stone resource. You should probably build more stone. I can't afford it! What do you know? I have to uh, sit and wait for that. Because, you know, awesome. It's, you know, one of these games. <laughs> so I just have to sit and wait. Can I even build a slum? Such slums cost 50 food. More slums. There you go. That's all of our food. And I just wait. How do I even build the fields? How do I even farm sheep farm cattle farm regular farm? But the farm. How do I get it to actually produce wheat? <laughs> I, I, there's wheat fields. Can I not? Oh, I bet the wheat fields. Okay. I bet you the wheat fields are just there. Or they're not there. I can't do anything about it. I have the woodcutter tell it to cut the fell logs, which takes three minutes and 45 seconds, and just a lot of waiting, and I said it's an idle game for sure. Which, uh, what's your feel about cross-platform idle, like, mobile games? Definitely a mobile game as well. It's throw it on your, walk around your iPad or play it. 
I mean, I don't have a lot of experience with this game, so I don't have much to, I don't have much to uh, say about it. Also, somehow when you train peasants, you turn like 10 peasants into one worker, which is very strange, or one uh, craftsman. And you get a code, it's a free game. You get a code for the gold, the premium resource, and use that to do things like, you know, complete the harvesting and harvest faster, and oh, that was this, I can't complete the wheat field, but we can complete the, complete the wood, oh uh, yeah, there you go, got a bunch of wood, woo. I can do stuff like that, you can also go to our army, get our swordsman, I upgraded the heck out of the swordsman, I gave him perfect equipment, they have a bunch of armor and attack, and did some extra chance to avoid being wounded and extra experience, that costs a ton of gold. Also slightly upgraded. There's three different tiers. Let's see if I can show someone that I didn't upgrade. Yeah, it's three different tiers of upgrades. So you have just a basic one they get for free. Tier one, like 18, 55, 180. That swordsman I did all you get like a thousand gold for free. So the swordsman I did all the 180 upgrades, which took a ton of a ton of equipment. But it's kinda and then the other ones had to do the lower level upgrades to level them up. But then they it felt they didn't have to feel very good because well, only hunter. Oh, it's a I have a third slot. I just, I just unlocked a third slot. It didn't feel very good because now all of a sudden I have access to oh yeah, you get a face and a banner. Woo! <laughs> and here's the order screen. The special abilities you can use during combat, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Um, you yeah now we're, now I'm leveled up so I can recruit cavalry. I'm like oh yeah, cavalry would be cool, probably really strong. I replace some of my units cavalry. But I'm like well I just spent all that gold on all that pre all that real money. If it was real money, you know, I got it for free from the Humble Bundle, which I guess technically money from the Humble Bundle, but it's a premium resource. I just spent a lot of money upgrading these low-level guys, so I guess it's my own short-sightedness, even though it's not really short-sightedness because I didn't expect to play this game for very long, so I just messed around with the, uh... Hey, it's fish. I need a harbor. Can I make a harbor? What do I need to make a harbor? Oh, I reached lower level 16. Cool, I'm low, lower level 6. So, so I can't fish. I haven't killed enough dudes, so I can't fish because I haven't killed enough guys. Anyway. What was I? What was I saying? Very all distracted. I have I have forgotten. It's I, what's there to say about a about an idle game where you just click and let the game play itself? You do get combat though. That is one thing you can participate in. Let's just show that off. You get missions. There's also battle quests and then duels, which I assume is a multiplayer. So you get some multiplayer and campaign, which I would presume is multiple missions in a row. Yeah, reach Lord level A. Ugh, <laughs> the most annoying form of progression. And we get some silver. Let's do a challenging one. Challenging, challenging. Stone or food? We need food, so let's fight a bunch of cavalry. It's not, probably not going to go well for us because we do not have spearmen. We have specifically not good against cavalry guys, but I'll just show you the combat. And I guess if I lose, you can see what happens if you lose. You can also buy premium bonuses per battle for a small amount of gold. So melee units deal extra damage. Hire a unit of mercenaries. You know, let's see what happens if you do that. Let's skip the battle. Don't know where the mercenaries are. And now we just wait you. Target those guys, you have to wait. For some reason, the target unit command is on like a cooldown, even for separate archer units, so it doesn't make any sense to me. The guys start shooting, and then they charge automatically once they get close. This is a combat, it's just it's just in lanes, happens automatically, you have some interactivity, like choosing when charges. Oh that's a terrible charge. Choosing when charges activate. Uh you guys go have some extra melee. Um, alright, y'all seem to be doing good. Y'all doing okay, I guess. Here, you need some reinforcements, I don't like how this is going. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is how it's going. Uh, you can now shoot those guys. You take aim, stop shoot, shooting your own dudes. Uh oh, oh, our swordsman died! No, oh, our swordsman! And then for some reason your archers will charge them. This is a really weird system. Here's the mercenaries, I think. Yeah, here's the mercenaries, go get them mercenaries! Um, oh, I was paying attention to that. Go, go fight. Go. They yeah, can't. They just wait well, one by one to get in melee combat. You. How about you help? Uh, you know what? Just keep, yeah, keep shooting those guys. You can taunt like they will. When there's no one else in front of you, your units will be taunted. And they will go. Oh, that's a terrible charge. And they will go fight melee combat, which doesn't seem. It doesn't feel good, make any sense for your archers to be charging in combat. I'm like, why are they doing that? I don't understand. Why? 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 <laughs> Someone help me out with that. Yeah, you guys get some extra reinforcements and extra melee combat. Do you not get two orders at once? Because I don't actually get two orders at once. 
The hunters, what are you trying to do? But you're not shooting anything? No, they're moving over to melee combat. Okay. Not like I said, not particularly interesting on melee. <laughs> not particularly interesting combat system. Unsurprisingly, we lost. But like I said, we're going against cavalry when we have a very. We have a army that's very vulnerable to cavalry. Can, I, can we like, speed this up at all? I don't think we can. We just have to sit here and wait. It's very gripping, exciting combat. Alright, mercenaries, go get them. So this is mercenaries are super good. We're, we're kind of boned here. Will you go, someone go, will you go charge them? There we go. Let's see if we can get a good charge in here. Yeah, yeah that's good. Good enough. Can give them the extra damage order. Give them a little bit of damage buff. Go get them, guys. You get them. You have little shields and swords? Like three of them. Just kill them. Come on. We can give you the extra reinforce. Apparently, you can't give two orders. Giving two orders, that would just waste it one last time. Kill the guy, I think. Good job, Now, then they be fight next one. Do I have to, like, move you? They're gonna move into you. You're just gonna hang out next to each other? Okay, here they come. They don't even charge. They just, like, move. They're not even fighting yet. They have, like, get into position. Uh, I hate to be critical, but it's like a mobile. It's like a mobile idol game. It's not really meant to stand up to like critical analysis. Wait, are you guys running away? Oh, they're totally running away, you cowards. But you know, they're mercenaries and that. Oh, he got taunted. Oh. Let's give you some extra damage for now. I have better do reinforcements. Give you the extra damage. They're getting kind of beat up. Well, yeah, you're doing some, they're doing some decent damage in there. Oh no, they're also getting wrecked. Ah, reinforcements go. Oh, they died. <laughs> they just or disappeared, ran away. Defeat. Alright, let's see what the punishment for defeat is. That's the first fight. The fight's normally pretty easy because, like I said, they. Oh, he spent a lot of gold to upgrade our troops. But apparently, even with the gold upgrades, he can't get past. I don't want to wait. Let's do an R fight actually. When he can't get past unit disadvantages that heavily. Alright, that's good to see. At least, at least it's not too much pay to win. Although, pay to win only really applies for like, no one cares if it's pay to win single player. Like, if you pay to win to beat the computer, right, people, people are just gonna make fun of you. No one cares about that. But, if it's pay to win the duels, then that's a big different problem, but we don't know about that yet. Let's do... This is challenging. That's a lot of enemies. You know, let's just do the normal one. Apparently, I'm not high enough level to take on the challenging ones. Even though that was, you know, we clearly weren't ready for that. And we don't need we don't need to spend uh, spend our gold. I want to show you they can buy these kind of upgrades. Yeah, I get I get it. It has the total war style. Um, you also move your soldiers around before combat. We don't need to do that. I don't think we need to do that though. Well, apparently we're doing that right now because I don't know how to get rid of that interface. Um, yeah, there's total war style like generals giving the rousing speech before the battle, but no, like that's not. Oh, I didn't. wasn't wasn't ordering. Com archery combat. No one's. I guess that's the only thing it really has in common with the titles. Okay. Keep going same. To oh my gosh, I got blown up by the artillery. Um, you guys. Got some reinforcements. And we won. Wow, that was super easy. Apparently, artillery doesn't not get involved in melee combat at all. Not surprising. Just sits in the back, shoots. It's, it, it's the great and the huge difference in difficulty between that one where he won super easily versus getting completely wiped out last time, but soldiers heal over time or with gold, which kind of describes all these kind of mobile idle games. Everything's either time or money, and then that is it. You just continue to grow resources, build up your town, you build a blacksmith, build some houses for workers, build a stable. Do need a stable? Let's rush that. Can I not rush it? I guess it only takes a few seconds regardless. Walls? I'm not sure how the walls work. So I'm not high enough level for whatever happens with the walls. Light cavalry, medium cavalry, or knight's cavalry, which you would also need for gold. Which is the axemen I'm not supposed to have. Those are gold units as well. I don't know what craft means. Reach low, I have to reach level 20. Thick armor and long swords. Mount knights are forced to be reckoned with. Too bad I already squandered our gold. I'd much rather have these cool like knights and higher level stuff, but waste it all at low level, which is silly because like they don't need the buffs at low level, and you're just gonna highly like quickly level up anyway. And like, why would I need to spend gold in low level units that don't need the help regardless? But medium cavalry, light cavalry, 
They are very good when pitted against footmen. Be wary of spearmen. Unguarded archers. Well, that's probably not going to happen. Just a medium cavalry. There you go. We have some medium cavalry now. And we leveled up for it. Yeah. And after, like, uh, I guess I guess we can just trade out the wounded. Yeah, we can trade out the wounded soldiers and give you some upgrades, even though not really because it costs a lot of money. We simply don't have. Our soldiers get experience. We can upgrade them, but apparently you don't get experience that fast. You have an extra 20... Extra defense for experience. There you go. Good job. Have fun with that. And that is... That is what you do in the game. Like I said, you can build walls. Build it. There, are your walls. I'm not, I said, not high enough level. There's one thing I will say about this game that I really found very interesting. Is that there's like this kind of terraforming mechanic. If we go over here, we say lower terrain. It'll take 10 food, I guess, to defeat the workers. But it'll lower the terrain, and it'll. Bam. And it'll go under the water. Now this place is actually going to be uh, prone to. The water is going to encroach on it. It's going to flood. And it's kind of. Or at least that's what I presume is going to happen. If I lower it again, I can't lower it again. Drowning terrain is too high, so I have to lower that terrain. I have to clear it first. Clear that area first. But if I. I could dam this area and stop this river. The tutorial like shows this off really well, so you have a dam running through your town, and this area isn't doesn't have any water in it. So you have to build this dam, and then raise the land around it in order to get the water out of your town. Then you rebuild the town, and then you need to lower the area over here in order to get the water flowing down here to uh, get water back to your farms. So that is that's actually kind of neat that they have that uh that kind of system. In place, we have to clear it. Does it really take that long? Why would it? I can clear the trees, but not harvest the. Why is the difference between clearing trees and harvesting trees? How does that even? How does that work? What's the justification? There? Yeah, that. Come on, come on. Lower that train so now I can lower this more. Let's see if it actually goes into the water, or there's just some weird visual thing going on. No, it is clearly not under the Why is that not under the water? Did they lie to me? Was that... Maybe we can build a craft castle now. Did they lie to me about how the water works? Isn't it in the tutorials like, yeah, you totally just like raise and lower stuff to control the water. I'm starting to think they're just lying to me. Because this is clearly... Should be flooded. And it's not. So maybe that cool thing I thought they did, they didn't really do. And it's a trick. Isn't that sad? Incomplete watchtower. Can I build... Why? Like what? Can I not do anything with that? Can I not build a watchtower there? Oh, the watchtower. The watchtower, you have to get to to uh, spread your uh, your lands. In order to get into Grasswell, we have to win a mission of challenging difficulty or higher, or just pay them a lot of money, which is just time. But that is, that's kind of disappointing that the water doesn't work as I expected. It was like the one cool thing I thought was going on in this game. But here we go, yeah, Total War Battle Kingdom, if you're into idle games, then... Yeah. It's not really a Total War game. That's kind of the problem I have with it. Like, it seems like a decent enough idle game, I suppose, if you're into idle games and whatnot. But like, I don't know what it has to do with Total War. Like, this is all not a Total War town system whatsoever. It's, the battle is not Total War battle. It had nothing to do with Total War. But they put Total War Daily label on anyway. It's just a it's just an idle game, medieval, like a medieval theme idle game with some light combat, and that's it. And I don't know why they put Total War on it, but there you have it. And that was our look at the Total War Humble Bundle, Humble Total War Bundle. Got to look at uh, Total War games and the action adventure Viking game, as well as the very interesting Total War Arena, probably the best, my personal, you know, MVP of this package. Total War Arena, I think, has some real potential. Total uh, Kingdom, let's not talk about that. And you get a soundtrack, some books. If you pay more than the average, you also get a uh, Medieval Total War Collection. Which includes, let's see, what was like, that in the original Medieval Total War? Medieval Total War and Medieval Total War Viking Invasion. So that's kind of weird that you get, like, the second one in the base, but then the first one there one, because, you know, obviously the first one's a little bit older. But, you know, if you like the first Total War, so we also get Empire Total War. I actually really liked Empire. It's not the most popular. A lot of people didn't like Empire Total War or Napoleon Total War. I personally uh, enjoy them. You can get some extra ten dollars of in-game gold for arena. Pay more than the average. You get sixty-six percent off. You get a coupon for Attila. 
I'll skip Shogun 2, Shogun Total War 2, uh, one of the more recent Total War games. And like I said, Napoleon Total War, like I said, like Empire. It's like, it's weird. Napoleon's weird because it's like a pseudo expansion to Empire. But uh, again, not particularly well received, but I really enjoyed it. If you pay 15, more, 15 or more, you get Rome 2. You get Rome 2, <laughs> Wrath of Sparta, Rome 2, Caesar and Gaul. Rome 2, Nomadic Tries, and Rome 2, you basically get Rome 2, like, gold special edition, you get all the expansion and everything for. So if you really, really want to play some Rome 2, there we got it. Uh, game did have some critical, some QA issues on pawn release, of course, but those are mostly all taken care of now. I've played it a little bit, I don't, haven't owned it, it was on a free weekend one time. Uh, I, do, I do like Total War, I just, you know, with the QA issues, I never bought it, and just never got into Rome 2. But I did have, play it for the free weekend, it's a pretty fun little game. If you pay thirty more dollars to get a T-shirt, cool. Get a T-shirt. I mean, it's a lot of money for a T-shirt feels like. So all you need to do is pay fifteen dollars for all the content. So like fifteen more dollars for a Total War T-shirt. But if you really, really, really like Total War, you get a T-shirt. So let's look at the bundle. I do like it. Like I said, Total War is one of my favorite uh, game series, and it gets me a little more hyped for Total War Warhammer. And you get access to Total War Arena, which is has some. You know, those kind of free-to-play uh, multiplayer arena games are very popular right now. And I feel like this one has some potential. Let me keep a little bit of eye on that. But also, I have some reservations about the combat. We've already been all over all that. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitch. Like this video, and I'll see you next time.